If you like this one, then you're definitely going to like this other one. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now for today's video, I'm doing another historical romance recommendations video. This one follows also the video idea that I've done before with my contemporary romances, where I suggest you to read another book following one of my favorite books, and maybe a book that you've already read and you're looking for something similar. So hopefully you guys can add some more books to your TBR, but let's go ahead and get started. So the first book that I want to talk about is actually one from Caroline Linden called About a Rogue. I actually haven't talked about this book at all on my channel channel. I literally just finished reading it this week and I absolutely adored it and I feel like I'm doing you guys a disservice if I don't talk about it enough. So this one is about our heroine who is actually from a family who owns a pottery business and she is I believe the older sister and she really wants to own this business. Like literally that's her goal. She's a very fierce independent businesswoman but she can't help but think about her younger sister who is actually betrothed to someone who she thinks that is a rogue, definitely not worth her sister's time and is going to break her heart and hurt her feelings. Now our hero is actually that rogue that I was just talking about and our hero actually has a plan in place, mostly because he's been told that he has a chance of earning a lot of money every year from an allowance and actually having like a duke title or at least like a very high lineage title if he can prove to the person who's in charge of the estate that he is worth the time and that he can refine himself from being a rogue, a rake, to a duke and a noble status. So the last thing that he expects is that the person that he wants to marry and that older sister actually stopping him from marrying the younger sister. And our younger sister is actually in love with someone else. So our heroine actually helps the younger sister run off and run away to be happy. And in placement, she is going to step up and become that wife or that fiance for our hero. So this book actually follows the storyline of them having a marriage of convenience and they're married for like 90% of the book. And it was so sweet. It was so adorable. And I just loved how it was an enemies to lovers romance turned into friends to lovers, but not too fast. It was just unbelievably cute. And this one definitely reminded me of Julia Quinn's novel from the Bridgerton series called The Viscount Who Loved Me, which follows the same trope too as well. You know, we have Anthony Bridgerton, who is the playboy, the rake, the rogue, the one person that seems to not be able to settle down with any female until he sees the younger sister of our heroine in that novel and he thinks that she is going to be you know the proper girl that he's going to marry but unfortunately the older sister who is our heroine once again sees this and stops it and Anthony is very intrigued by Kate and doesn't want to let go of Kate but also knows that maybe Kate isn't the right person for him because he wants someone like the younger sister. Um, what I forgot to also mention was that these two novels obviously involve a lot of insecurity from both sides since our characters are unsure of the feelings of, from their opposites, so from their partners. So in About a Rogue, our heroine is actually unsure um, if the hero is actually in love with her or likes her appearance at least or find her attractive because he you know, pick the younger sister over her at some point in their relationship life. So really loved it. So definitely if you like The Viscount Who Loves Me by Jill Quinn, definitely check out About a Rogue. So the next novel that I want to recommend you to check out if you like this one is Hello Stranger by Lisa Claypess. Now, Hello Stranger is part of the Ravenel series by Lisa Claypess. I've had my ups and downs with Lisa Claypess in the past couple of years since she started writing historical romances again. So if you guys didn't know the timeline of her writing, is basically she was really focused in historical romances in the beginning of her writing career then she took a break wrote some contemporary romances and then she went back to historical romances with the Ravenel series now this one hello stranger is book number four in the series and I must admit that this one is not my favorite it's actually my least favorite I don't like this one at all I found the writing to be really dry I found the storyline to be very boring I didn't really like our heroine at all but 
if you like this one or if you at least like the idea of this one and you're like me who didn't really like the story then maybe you can check out this other recommendation that I'm about to recommend you. Now Hello Stranger is about our heroine who is actually the first female doctor in London. She is definitely very smart, very independent, and she knows what she wants to do in her life and that's to save people. So she's well educated and she's not gonna let her sex determine her fate. And then we have our hero who is, you know, intrigued by her, really likes how she's so independent and that she's so intelligent, obviously. And our hero is kind of like acting like a bodyguard in some ways too as well, because our heroine goes through different things that make her be put in danger. So our hero kind of protects her in that sense. But if we're looking for another female heroine who is kind of in that same realm of relationship where our hero is kind of there to stick up for her and that she is in the medical field, then definitely check out The Viscount Made Me Do It by Diana Quincy. Now, this one is actually book number two in her Cladestine Affairs series. I never read book number one, but I feel like you could read book number two without reading book number one. This one involves our female heroine who is actually a bone setter. Now, I don't know what a bone setter actually is, so I had to Google it, but basically they manipulate like the structure of their bones to cure any of like diseases that come from your bones or something like that. Like any ailments, like pains, then they can fix it for you. That involves like muscle and bone. So our hero doesn't trust her at all. And there's kind of an enemies to lovers trope thing happening here. But what happens is that our hero actually sees a necklace that the our heroine is actually wearing. And that necklace is the same necklace that his mother was wearing the night before she died and she was brutally murdered. So now our hero doesn't trust our heroine at all and our hero wants to expose her as the fraud that she is, that she's not a proper practitioner, that she's a fraud. But meanwhile, they kind of like develop a patient-doctor relationship and he starts to grow trust in her. So if you're looking for a romance with a strong independent heroine who's in the medical field and who are dealing with, you know, dangers and there's elements of mystery to it, then definitely go check out this one from Diana Quincy. If you didn't really like Hello Stranger from Lisa Kleypas, or even if you did like Hello Stranger from Lisa Kleypas. Now, the next book that I want to talk about is Lord Halt Takes a Bride by Vivian Lorette. If you guys watched one of my reading vlogs where I read the new Lisa Kleypas novel, as well as three Vivian Lorette novels, Novels, then you would definitely know that I quite enjoyed this one. So Lord Halt Takes a Bride follows our heroine who is unfortunately being forced to marry someone that she does not love and he is a scoundrel like he literally cheats on her all the time. She thought she could do it out of a sense of duty but then on the day of her marriage or the day of her wedding she actually runs away and she thinks that her friends who have been trying to convince her all along to not marry this dude has set up a carriage right outside the church and so she just runs into this carriage thinking that that was you know operated by her friend's cousin and she sees this really handsome man inside the carriage and she thinks that's the, like the friend's cousin but in reality that's like nobody and it's actually a stranger and it's actually our hero and our hero is kind of amused by this that someone has just jumped into his carriage and is demanding you know to quickly run off and um, go away as far as possible and obviously he's also attracted to her so he wants to play along and then that is the beginning of their road trip romance where he is taking her across the country to her aunt's house so that she can kind of like bury her head in the sand and forget about what she did in the town that she was from and then forget about how her father is probably really angry at her. And this is the road trip romance where a lot of things are happening. It's super wacky. It's really funny most of the times. It's very lighthearted. And if you're interested in another road trip romance that is on the same field, where it is very lighthearted, lots of things are happening that is super funny, then definitely check out 10 Things I Hate About the Duke, which is about our heroine who is also caught up in this like marriage of convenience agreement where she has to marry someone that she does not like at all. And she is on the day of her wedding night she actually drinks a lot and she gets drunk because she wants to like numb her emotions and numb her feelings and she actually is being kind of reined back and told to sober up by her groom or her fiance's best friend and she's like you know what like stop talking to me don't talk to me like you don't even know what i'm going through she's being very dramatic and she actually tries to climb out of the window of the room that she's in and then he has to 
obviously follow her and this is the start of their romance where they both run away from the wedding that they're supposed to attend and one of them is supposed to be the bride. A lot of crazy funny things happen along the way as well and you would think that this one would be you know just fun and lighthearted but our hero actually comes from a kind of a darker past like he definitely has a few things on his chest that he feels guilty about and you can kind of see these two characters kind of mend each other's broken hearts as well and obviously there's this one big huge predicament which is the fact that he ran away with his best friend's bride. So the next romance that I want to talk about is one from Lenora Bell. This one is called What a Difference a Duke Makes and I'm pretty sure I talked a lot about this book in a few of my videos already but this one I really really enjoyed. I just remember kind of gushing about it to Lenora too as well. I felt that her writing was so well done. It was so descriptive in some parts. It was so emotional but this one involves our hero who all of a sudden realizes that he's a father of two children. They're twins and he doesn't know what to do because he's not father material. He's a businessman. He's a nerd. He likes trains. He wants to operate with machines. He doesn't know how to comfort children. Like nothing. Like he doesn't understand anything. So he wants to hire a governess so that the governess can take care of them and hopefully teach them some manners because they're super rude. Then it enters our heroine who actually is a governess and she slowly teaches him how to be a proper father. And this is kind of like their wonderful romance where they build a family together and it's super sweet. So if you really like that one then definitely check out this one called No Earls Allowed by Shannon Galen. Now this one I read recently too. I loved it so much. This one involves our heroine who is actually the owner or runs an orphanage and she's obsessed with it because she really cares about these children and so much that she ignores her father's requests to have her go back to London to go have a proper introduction to society so that she can get married. And she doesn't have time for marriage. She has a whole orphanage to run. So our father or her father is completely taken aback by how she's so strong-willed about this and that she's standing her ground that he actually hires a bodyguard or a hero to kind of like haul her back into the town. And there is where our grumpy hero actually has to kind of go to the orphanage meet all these little boys and children everywhere who don't know, you know, their left and their rights. And it's a circus there. And he is like, you need to stop. You need to come back to London. But then she's like, no, I'm not doing it. So he's like, okay, fine. If you're not coming to London, then I guess I'll stay here and I'll take care of these children. And he learns to be a good father too as well to these boys and becomes a strong role model for them, despite thinking that he is not a good person. So the next book that I want to talk about or the last two books that I want to talk about is one from Lorraine Heath called Scoundrel of My Heart and this one is part or book one in Once Upon a Dukedom series and this one is one of my favorites too as well. This one follows our hero who is a black sheep character and he is like the second heir so he's like an, a spare to the heir like you know he's a spare and he doesn't feel like he is worth anything because he's not going to get anything in terms of like the lineage and the and things like that. So he wants to give up the person that he loves the most because the person that he loves the most is our heroine and our heroine needs to marry for duty and needs to marry for money so that she can use her husband's money to take care of her family. But what happens is that she actually asks our hero to help her seduce his older brother and he you know, wants to do everything for her, wants her to be happy. So he's willing to put aside his feelings to help our female heroine do this. And it's kind of like a very angsty romance where obviously it's kind of forbidden as well. And it was so cute in a lot of moments. Now, if you like that one from Lorraine Heath, then definitely check out this one from Anna Harrington called When the Scoundrel Sins. This one kind of follows exactly like the same plot line as well, where our heroine needs to marry ASAP. And she doesn't have time to date around or court anybody anymore. So she asks her best friend to help her kind of like refine herself so that she can marry someone of like a wealthy standard. And what she actually suggests is that 
because her reputation's in tatters from a scandal that, sh that happened to her, um, what she actually suggests is that she suggests to her childhood friend and her hero that he should just marry her because she is desperate. And he is like kind of like a commitment phobe, mostly because he has a lot of things going on in his life that he doesn't want to do it, obviously, because he feels like she deserves more. And this is kind of a very angsty romance where we have two characters who are very like very firm on their sides and reasoning of why they should either not get married or why they should get married and i really enjoyed it it was definitely really angsty so if you're looking for an angsty read like lorraine heath definitely check out anna harrington but anyways that is it for all the recommendations that i have for you for if you like this historical romance definitely check out this historical romance hopefully you guys enjoyed this video comment down below what kind of video you want to see from me next and i'll see you guys again next time with a new one bye